Yo, what up guys? This is a TP-Link smart switch. So smart switch of TP-Link are actually configurable uh, switches, right? So this has a traffic prioritization. It also has VLAN, which we are very much interested in. And of course, we have intelligent management. So another one here that you can see is the network monitoring. So you can monitor the traffic that's flowing through the switch. Okay, so... Uh, quickly check this one out and then try to access and configure this one so that you know what you're going to do if you get one of these ones. So by the way, this is a um, 24 port gigabit switch. Your switch. At the back of this one, you can see settings here. The username is admin, the password is admin, and we can change the one later on. With my experience with TP-Link, uh, more often they use the 192.168.0.1 IP address. So I'm just going to guess the one. Hopefully, I'll be there. So I'll pull up my laptop here. All right, guys. So I'm going to plug this one in any port with the switch. Then I'm also going to plug it here on my laptop. Okay, and then we basically jump into my laptop. So I'm going to do a screen recording here. I'm going to go to my, um, as you can see, we are recording here. The first thing I'm going to do is put a static IP address that is with the same network with this one so that we can configure it. So I'm just going to go to my type in control panel. Then I'm going to go to that control panel, go for my network in internet. Then of course, network in sharing. Then basically, um, it says here identifying, so we can. I believe we cannot get an IP address from this uh, port we have here uh, on our laptop going to the uh, this one, this switch. So I'm just going to go ahead and click this uh, Ethernet. You see the details here. It's 169.254.6.120, meaning that we are not getting any IP address from a DHCP server. So this doesn't have a DHCP server active as of the moment. I'm going to go to IP Internet Protocol version 4 and type in 192.168.0.100. Okay, so the default IP address of this one is 1. So we are safe with 100 and trying to put the subnet mask. And then uh, we don't need to have a default gateway for this one, but uh, it's up to you if you want to place one. I'll just go ahead and press OK. OK. And then check on details. Um, um, auto configuration. I don't know why it's not getting that IP. Let's close it again. Close the uh, open it. There you go. We have 192.168.0.100. So that is already registered. I'm just going to open up one browser here. Let's go ahead and open this one. I'm going to type in the IP address of this 192.168.0.1. So there you go, we have TP-Link. You can see that I have the dashboard TP-Link. I'll just go ahead and admin, admin, and then we go ahead and log in. So change your password, it's prompting me. Okay, let's try to put a new password. So I'll type in, uh, for the sake of this video, I'll just make it simple, admin 1234, and then admin 1234. But but if, if, if this is real production, make sure you place a more, um, um, harder to guess passwords, okay? Confirm. All right, so as you can see here, this is the model, that's the IP address. I can always uh, access this one via 192.168.0.1. Click on the um, navigation right uh, left pane here, system, and then you can see IP settings. We can change the settings of this, um, the IP address of this one if you want to. Uh, we can also do the led on off okay that's cool user account we can create user uh, we can set up we can set up the password again uh, system tools and then we have firmware system reset if you want to reset the settings jump into switching what do we do with switching you can see here igmp snooping port settings so you can see here uh, all the ports and you can basically turn off on flow control and check on this uh, speed in duplex if you want. But uh, in most cases, we don't actually configure this one. So we'll just go ahead and skip that. Uh, IGMP snooping, very good for multicasting. 
Um, this is not our target, but it's up to you if you want to go ahead and uh, what do you call this one? Uh, check that one out. Also, lag, uh, link aggregation, link aggregation, blah, blah, blah. So you can group the ports here uh, so that they are going to become one. But um, that's not our purpose again. So lag one, lag two. You can put all one, two, three, four ports into one lag and that could become one port, uh, virtually one port, okay? And then we have the monitoring here, guys, where in, you can see it here, how many packets is going through each of the ports. Uh, port mirror, this is the one that I'm telling you guys. If you want to do port mirroring on port number five, number one, uh, it means to say that if data uh, or traffic is going to pass through this one, it's going to uh, it's going to pass through this switch. It's going to create a duplicate copy of the traffic and forward it to this port. Okay. Cable test. One other thing that you can have here is loop prevention, which is very cool in a. Uh, more complex network environment because if you plug in another port to that port creating that loop uh, You would have a network problem. So the good thing here if you enable this one is that uh, Once the loop is created, it's going to block the other port so that the loop will be broken Okay, now jumping on to VLAN because this is what we're looking at um, It is basically still disabled. We go to port based VLAN this is one of the most interesting parts wherein you can create a VLAN here. I'll just create, uh, it says you can create VLAN ID 2 to 24, so I'll just create 10. And then who is the member of this port? So I'm going to put uh, 2, 3, 3, 4, 5. And then I'm going to apply, okay? And then I have VLAN 10, I have VLAN 10 already here, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, so by default, we are a member of VLAN 1. We're going to create another VLAN 20 because this is to 24. I'm going to member um, 10, 11, and 12, apply. Then they are actually, uh, the, the second VLAN was created, okay? Um, this 802.1Q VLAN is basically a trunk. So we can enable this one if there's a trunk that we can place here wherein two of the VLANs can pass through this uh, uh, trunk. Then we jump into QoS, what is, we have bandwidth control with uh, QoS, wherein you can set the egress rate also, and the egress rate. So we can basically select all of this one, you can set maybe 100 MB, 200 MB, 1 gigabit, it's, it's up to you guys. Storm control also is a feature wherein uh, it's going to limit the broadcast packets on all of these ports so that you're not going to have a storm control uh, problem. So that is all about uh, this um, tippling, the features that this one has. It's basically a uh, affordable kind of switch that you can use to create, to have more of the feature of a layer to switch. So there you go, guys. If you have any questions, just drop a comment down below. These are the features and the things that you can do with this switch. Thank you for watching, guys, and see you guys in the next video.